Hello, I'm Megan, aka Just Run It, and this is Megan's Monday Musings. Uh, I am fresh off of a knitting event this past weekend. I headed to Madison, Wisconsin for the January thaw put on by Sun Valley Fibers. Uh, I thought maybe something was going on with my sinuses because of the dryness in the hotel room, uh, but I'm thinking I may have caught the, the bug that has been going around uh, here in Minnesota and in my family. Um, so I've got a, a glass here that hopefully I can clear my voice, but please, um, please excuse my, my horse, my horse voice. Tis the season. <laughs> I wanted to start off this week by thanking everyone for their cup of kindness, uh, cowl, uh, love. It was so exciting to see so many people grabbing the pattern. Um, and a lot of people have started. I really, uh, enjoy seeing that. Make sure to tag me so I can ooh and awe over it. Uh, and I also really enjoyed folks that reached out and shared their, how they share um, kindness through their craft um, with their friends, with uh, knitting for charity. And so um, that, that brought a smile to my face all of last week. And I appreciate it. And thank you all for filling up my cup of kindness uh, to kind of further that, um, that thought and then expound on uh, my experiences this past weekend, I was going to talk about expanding your knitting community. And so uh, knitting can be a very solitary uh, hobby sometimes, which is one of the things I enjoy about it, right? If I don't have somebody to talk to while I'm waiting in line at the DMV uh, or at soccer practice when I'm sitting someplace all by myself, uh, I can it can be completely solitary. And that's fantastic because I can feel um, I can feel like I'm accomplishing something, uh, and crafting, but, um, it also can be a very social hobby. So, um, I've heard the statistic that there are actually more knitters in the world than there are golfers, uh, which is kind of hard to believe, but we see the golfers out golfing. And so, um, it's really about representation, um, and seeing it out in public. Um, and so while going to a knitting event, uh, like a knitting retreat or Vogue Knitting Live was recently, uh, and I had a lot of, um, oh, I wish I were there to see all the knitters, um, when that was going on, um, you can go to a weekly knitting event, uh, or a weekly knitting meetup, right? Just to knit and chat and drink coffee, or they have some at, um, breweries sometimes or both. Um, so people like me can drink coffee and other people can drink, um, beer. So, uh, it seem knitting events seem to like retreats seem to fit better into my schedule. So that's a, um, a kind of concentrated amount of time, um, on one weekend versus, you know, every week here and there, uh, just with my family schedule, of um, balancing the, what the kids are doing as well as getting outside of the house and working outside of the house and coordinating all of that. Knitting events seem to work best for me. Um, I would highly advocate for, um, for going to one. I know I'm a little bit biased because I'm one of the retreat organizers for the Zombie Knitpocalypse that's here in Rochester, Minnesota every June. Uh, but it's just a magical experience. If, if you don't, you don't have to do it yearly, uh, as I like to do or semi yearly when you go to Rhinebeck, um, or, um, or the zombie knit apocalypse or January thaw or SSK, or there's, there's lots of knitting events, shepherd's harvest, uh, up in the twin cities. Uh, there's lots of regional, um, knitting and fiber events that you can attend, but, um, you know, do it the, at the frequency that, that works best for you. But I feel like it really invigorates my knitting, um, and my joy for the craft to go out and socialize and touch base with other knitters of like-minded knitters, right? People that love, um, love the same things that I love about knitting, um, walking into a room, wearing a recent finished object and having people ask you about it. What yarn did you use? Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, did you do that modification? Um, I left that event with a queue full of fabulous projects that I didn't know about before I saw somebody walking around wearing it, uh, and, um, or yarns or just novel ideas of how to do things. Um, and so it's really a cross pollination of knitters from all different walks of life, all different experiences. And, you know, the internet makes, um, the knitting world feel very small, but it's very, very big. And you learn that when you, met, um, when you get together and you knit together and you meet up. 
Um, so I encourage you to do a meetup, whether it, again, it's just reaching out to one knitter and saying, hey, can we go grab a coffee or going to um, a knitting event. Uh, and then I'm going to dive in here into some details about uh, the January thaw. So it's always, I think it's almost always the third January or the third Saturday in January. Um, aptly named the January thaw sometimes. Sometimes it's super cold, but sometimes it was warm. It was warm this year. Uh, had a little bit of rain and snow. Um, it can seem like these events are all about the yarn because that's where a lot of the pretty pictures are. Um, and I, this year was no... Um, did not diverge from that uh, for me. Uh, I, I took some video of Jeanette and George's and families. It's a whole family business. Um, Rachel was there as well and helping uh, their beautiful wall of yarn. Um, they just have a complete rainbow, like every shade of every color that you could think of, um, beautiful bases. And uh, I took a video of that as well as a little bit of the room. It wasn't very full. There was a class. So Kate Atherley was teaching um, classes this year. And she also spoke um, about finding joy in our knitting and how her role as a tech editor is to make sure that we find joy in our knitting because we don't run into things that frustrate us and turn our hobby into something that we don't enjoy. Uh, but I diverge. So the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn. Um, there's also wonderful places to go in uh, the Madison area besides the, um, the the wonderful market that you get to sit and stare at in the uh, in the ballroom. Um, we went to Sousier, which is a coffee shop slash uh, knitting shop in Verona, Wisconsin, uh, near Epic, uh, the township of Epic. Uh, if you're familiar with that. Um, electronic medical record uh, vendor. And um, it's a fabulous place. I, I wish that I could have it close by and or open my own coffee shop slash yarn shop. Um, we also went to the Wisconsin Craft Market, which is again, just um, a wonderful, not just yarn, all kinds of crafts and hobbies. Unfortunately, um, I think they're redoing uh, the strip mall that they're, or the mall area that they're in. And so they're closing, which made me really sad. But I did find um, some hedgehog fiber arts in their BFL base that um, I didn't know that they had. So this is 80% BFL, 20% nylon, machine washable in the goblin colorway. I love it. And the dragonfly colorway. At one point, I had nine skeins of this <laughs> in my little cart. They also have like um, shopping trolleys and carts uh, like you would at a um, at a supermarket, which could be super fun. You don't see that a lot at a yarn shop. Um, I had nine of these. So I had like a sweater's quantity of this, a sweater's quantity of this, two to do like a color work something. And I, I had to pull it back. I had to show some restraint. I was like, I got to use up this BFL and see um, how I like it. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, we also went to Knit Circus. They have beautiful gradients, beautiful colorways. Um, and learned the difference between the impressionistic and the modernistic and the um, different dye techniques that they use. Uh, lots of really fun bases, a Coriadel base, a BFL base. Um, and that was a, they've recently expanded. So that was a, a sight to see. Um, and while at uh, the January thaw, I got um, this aquifer and this is Splash 021, which I think must be like a one of a kind, but this is gonna be some sort of color work on their, um, this is their on their MCN. So soft and beautiful. I'm so excited about everything um, after the event. Today is a little bit of a uh, coming back to reality, a little re-entry is hard, um, but I, I'm still carrying with me all that excitement and love that I got from the event. Um, and this is Wedgwood. And then I have a, this was something that I had a sweaters quantity of from last year's uh, January Thaw uh, in the cinnamon colorway. And I think this is going to be um, the color work on a yoke and the bottom part of a silver lining by Jen Steinglass. Um, this is on their BFL DK. So I used the black white filter and figured out that this was, um, I did it with this one as well, um, that these were two colors where you could see a lot of contrast and that I would, I would enjoy it. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, it's not just all about the yarn. There's a lot of cross-pollination of gorgeous projects. My queue is overflowing. They had a little, um, 
a little walk the runway uh, fashion show uh, where you, they talked about all of the different um, Sun Valley Fiber projects that, that people brought, which is super fun. And you get to hear about a lot of projects there. Um, and then, you know, ultimately the, the why I want to go year after year and why I make time in my schedule to, to go um, is because people fill your cup. They fill your cup with kindness. They fill your cup with love, lots and lots of laughter, which again, may be part of why I'm having a little bit of um, trouble speaking today. Lots of talking and laughing, good food, um, you know, and people, when you're in person, share stories that maybe they don't feel like sharing, they can share online um, or, um, that, you know, it, it's just a better face-to-face, -face, uh, a better face-to-face -face interaction. And so you, you get these deep, meaningful relationships that you carry with you into the rest of your day. So lots of test texting and messaging today with wonderful friends that, again, filled my weekend with love and laughter. Um, and I'm trying to carry that forward and not be sad that it's over, but happy that it happened and that um, I'm, I'm bringing all of that with me. Um, and that I got to have that experience. And I, I encourage you all um, to, to reach out to somebody, to go to an event, to make time in your schedule, to make knitting not just a solitary hobby um, that you can do late at night when everybody's asleep or early in the morning um, or post pretty pictures on Instagram, which is again, very, um, uh, it, it, it's a wonderful part of our craft, don't get me wrong, but uh, go out and make sure that you expand your knitting community um, and that you reach out and make human connections with others based off of knitting as well. Uh, I'm going to, again, show you the beautiful, um, awe-inspiring wall of gorgeousness that Jeanette and George have, and then post a couple of group photos that I snapped. I was very much in the moment this weekend. I set out to take a lot of pictures and... Um, and, and whatnot and just and just didn't. I was just off of my phone, which meant that I was fully engaged there, but meant that I don't have much to show you. But um, that is my wish for all of you, that you, you would at least get to have that experience and find out if it's something that really fills your cup up and you need to do it all the time, or um, you can do it, uh, you know, here and there as you, as you are able. Uh, bye, Ufta.